Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to game number three of our quarterfinal between Asura Rage and the stack already into this draft between the two teams with the EU stack coming back in game number two with some excellent strategy and a great victory over Asura Rage. We'll see if they can come back and show us a little bit more in game number three. But Asura Rage, they're already going to put a stop to the Vig and Shinbi, banning it out with their first ban. Yeah, the stack's still forced to uh, remove that Gideon, and also Asura Rage taking away the Aurora. So, substantially different draft compared to the first two games. Asura Rage really trying to shake the, zinc the compositions up, uh, try put the stack on something different, not something they might have been playing the past couple of games, something they might be slightly less comfortable with. However, Rampage is still up, so I've been still going to grab that hero. He's going to be still pretty happy. Yeah, they are completely all right with having Aben on the Rampage. And, you know, exactly how many new heroes are you going to have to go on to? Because there's only two bands allowed. Um, maybe they try something a little bit different. We're going to have an Iggy and Scorch from the stack this time around. A hero that was banned out in the first two games. So we're finally going to see the EU boys picking that up. A hero that they accept is pretty damn strong in the EU. Yeah, he's pretty damn strong. I believe for a long time in terms of like in-house league and stuff, they just said, yeah, he's permanently banned. No one's allowed to pick him. Remove him. He doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Everyone something forget. that they can do since they are kind of organized games over there. But yeah, it, it's a hero that they don't even see as worth picking in their uh, setup matches over there. So it's it's interesting to see it getting some competitive play in these matches, or even not being picked up in some of the other ones that we've seen today. Uh, there is again, the crunch. the crunch. Geronimo Jack himself making his way into the PCL, even though he won't be showing up until tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, a Murdoch as well for the stack. So the stack has decided to change this up quite a bit. I'm quite happy with it because Crunch and Iggy and Rampage really strong at taking Fangtooth. It's one of the main things uh, I love about Iggy on this patch, especially for comp play. You set up those three turrets as sort of a zone of control. They can push people off and allow him to take the, the fang tooth incredibly quickly, um, which is something a lot of these teams, they've been waiting a little bit to take it. You don't, we haven't been seeing it taken until about, what, the eight, nine minute mark at the moment, even though, though it does spawn at the two minute mark. With Iggy, you can push for that timer to get a little bit earlier, start those fang tooth stacks building uh, earlier get that early game lead and try snowball a bit more, which I do really like. And there is the Bellica coming out from the Serious Rage. Strong mid laner will do pretty well against Iggy. Um, early game can try and push him out the first couple of levels for Iggy. You know, gets his turrets uh, leveled up a bit. And when they're a bit more difficult to take out, that's when Bellica will struggle. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see if the stack can take care of those turrets enough at all. Um... But a Rage do have to take some care of some turrets of their own with the flame turrets of Iggy and Scorch. And I'm taking a look at their lineup right now. It's going to look a little bit more difficult because they're mostly melee with Revenant having to reload between shots. So I think that their turret control is going to be kind of difficult on their side. Yeah, I think Crunch is going to have an okay time um, outputting a lot of his damage against that composition. If he can get onto Revenant or Belka, he's going to have... Uh... A pretty a pretty okay time mural however is very strong with the stacks composition we haven't seen a mural today but being able to shield a rampage and a crunch so they have way more time to do their auto attack hits actually going to be a real big pain uh, i'd like to see a sort of rage maybe try and punish the mirror the mirror pick she can be pretty weak early um susceptible to ganks uh, specifically and i'd like to see him try put her behind before she can get to that level five well, Muriel over Phase. We're going to have to see how it works out for the stack. I haven't really seen Muriel too much today at all, but this will be our first match on stream having it. So let's start up the game in 3, 2, 1, go. And this time with 100% more in-game sound. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for the PCL 11 
Again, Piff and Gems bringing you the matches here in the quarterfinals. Game number three. It is all tied up, and this one will decide who makes it into the semifinals. Let's start it by introducing Asura Rage. Book Sinkerman playing the Narbash. Yufel will be handling the Revenant. We're going to have Hi to You playing the Belka. Ian Fidalco on the Jungle Grux this time around. And then finally, Appy Picker. He's going to be freezing everything as the Aurora. And on the side of the stack, it's Malix on that Murdoch, Ivan on that Rampage, Vigin on the Crunch, Oak Granola on the Mural, and Yosurud on that. Again, Scorch already starting up with the Flame Turrets on the mid lane. And this is a hero that can definitely take advantage of the Lieutenant Belka. We'll see how high you plays against it. But it can be difficult sometimes as a Belka just to try to out damage and out CS this year just because of all of the the control that Iggy has and the lack of mobility of Belica. Yeah, one map, while she does lack in mobility, that seismic assault is crucial for early game fights, can be used as follow up for nearly anything and, and can be used as a very strong engagement tool. Um, what I want to see here is to uh, keep track of the jungles. We're not seeing uh, the same sort of lane. Uh, the offlane is going into the jungle to disrupt the Infidago this time around. He's actually, he has managed to grab this green with fair ease. Uh, same with Ivan, hasn't actually gone for the invade. So both sides playing a little bit safer in terms of the early game. The match is a lot more important, so that's probably why we're not seeing as many risky plays. Well, this match is important for both teams. The stack kind of getting away from their stretch from the last one. Smash and grab is going to miss on you, so rude dude could have landed him in a spot of trouble if it had actually gone through, but he will be able to stay in the mid lane and high to you will just have to deal with these flame turrets for a little bit longer. Meanwhile, in the off lane, Appy Picker getting Malik's quite low. Glacial Charge is going to get him through, and it's going to allow him to get the kill. Minion still getting into the action. Oak Granola quite low. Rock narrowly misses Appy Picker. Now he knows that Aven is just waiting on the low ground. Can he actually get this recall? Ian Fidalgo is the one to go down. They both have green buffs. They both have some damage at their disposal. But man, if Appy Picker didn't get out of that fight in a hurry. Yeah, they decided to take a fight with Oak Granola not having access to any shields. Um, which ended up kind of losing that fight. He went for the slow on the Q, but no shield, so that damage was all permanent. Oh, you got to be kidding Aben. me. The rock from the low ground from Aben. But Yusa Rude Dude gets baited into it by his teammate. Hi to you, manages to hit the seismic assault and gets the void bomb for the kill. That's some that's some steely nerves right there. Turning around so after that rock. Very good starting from Asura's Rage. A uh, couple of mistakes here happening on the side of... The stack that didn't necessarily need to happen, it's stuff that going into the final get, uh, game here in the core finals for them, they should really try and avoid, um, I'm not sure if it maybe the Muriel pick in general, but if they had phase might have been a better engage, but now Appy Picker's got a pretty free lane to himself. Now he's got a free lane and that'll serve to make it even more difficult for this Muriel to have too much of an effect here, also going to make it difficult for her. Uh, because anytime she goes for an, a reversal of fortune to other parts of the map, Appy Picker is going to say, okay, that's my cue to go right on to Malx as he gets even more of an advantage in this lane. Yeah, that is true. And uh, we can see a girl just going out to get some vision, tries to up that um, safe area that they can back up into. However, Appy Picker, like you were saying, has already got that spike in. He can now pretty happily sit in that lane, not really worrying if he's going to, you know, end up getting pushed out he can regen he can start farming very very effectively you can already see that in his score 17 farm um vegan doing pretty well on his side as well sitting at 16 so it's still okay both sides but you know he's got this break in he's he's managed to get a kill as well on the board which is going to be really helpful yeah appy picker is ready to have a, another pretty good game he's been pretty stand on in this series Having good games on the Grux and uh, looking pretty good as the Aurora here. Now Ian Fidalgo comes in from the side. They're ready to go. He's going to get knocked back a little bit by Malx, but mm, unfortunately it's enough for the smash and grab not to hit. So Ian Fidalgo won't be hitting on that engagement. So he'll have to look elsewhere. Aben picks up the, the blue buff. And Ian Fidalgo is kind of left wondering what exactly he can do on the map except just go ahead and 
farmer's own jungle. It's not really too much yeah. for him here. The vision control means that he can't really do much. He's going to try and potentially look for an invade? Or no, he's going for Yosterud on mid, but the thing is, Yosterud's got the invis buff. No, he's so just a train. Yosterud... He, he's just a train going across the, the map. Luckily, Yosterud didn't auto-attack, because if he if um, him knew that Yosterud was just sitting in that mid lane, that might have been it. Yeah, Yusarud is still having a bit of a difficult time here, though. With that early death, Haichi has been putting a lot of damage onto him. I also noticed that Yusarud is having a little bit of a difficult time working with the tower here. So I think Assault is going to miss. Appy Picker still here. Blaze is there, trying to keep Yusarud to alive, but Cryo starts to come out. It's really not good news at all for the Iggy, and Aven's going to get in there as well. Don't really think they can take the Rampage down. He needs to get the Rock on the high to you, but he's just going to manage to skirt away into his own jungle, and Happy Picker gets away as well. Could have been some kind of opportunity there for the stack, but they can't really find the Rock on the high to you, and that's just going to be a 1 for 0. Easy enough for a Sura Rage. Yeah, they didn't have the damage output to us. Muriel, uh, Muriel plus Rampage, not really going to be the sort of high damage output you'd really like. Uh, I've been already used his Rock multiple times, pretty low on mana. And this is looking like a completely different game from the first couple of games. This time we're seeing the Sora's Rage trying to take control here, uh, trying to punish these picks that we've been seeing on the, uh, from the stack. Iggy has been punished in mid lane. We've been seeing uh, the Mural getting punished, as I was talking about before. Uh, try and put it behind as much as you can in the early stages of the game and take out this Murdoch. I don't know if I would call the game just yet though. I think there's a lot of area control and some good AoE damage from the stack that could bring them back through the mid game, even though this early game hasn't gone too great for them. Happy Picker going for some damage on the Malaxes. The shields are coming through from the Muriel, so the Malaxes is at least being able to, to deal with some of this damage, but still, the aggression is still there from Happy Picker, and it's making it difficult for Malax to farm. Yeah, Malax is going to really struggle to farm for a lot of the game. Um, you can really see a slight lead going over to you, Fel, um, in terms of uh, minion scores. However, I'm still going to be determined around this. I mean, whichever team gets that Fangtooth gets a substantial lead. At the moment, it's only a 2 2k gold lead on the side of Asura's Rage, despite all the great start they've had. Those three kills have managed to get them a couple of few extra attribute points. But if they manage to grab the Fangtooth, that's an instant 5k lead. And that's what we're going to have to keep an eye out for. That is what's going to get the stack back into the game if they're going to uh, have a better chance of winning this. Ian Fidalco makes his way over to the mid lane, but no charge, no kill. He's going to go for Yusa Rooted. Seismic Assault misses. The knockup misses. The smash and grab is there finally hitting here, but the Void Bomb is going to miss. Everything's just being evaded by Yusa Rooted, and the Neural Disruptor is going to leave his brains firmly planted inside of that little icky head. And a lovely rock from Ivan just hitting Ian. Uh, allows him to walk away um, just with a little bit of health. You saw the the whole kick coming up from high two, even the Bellica ultimate right there wasn't enough. And I mean, they used a lot of resources for that. Now, what I'd like to see here is potentially for the stack to try and take advantage elsewhere on the map, but they haven't been able to really do that yet. Mm, Bagan taking some damage. This is a hero that we haven't really talked about too much, but he definitely was one of the stars in the earlier game. You fell being Taken down by Vigan. They need to get some zoning done. They would love to get a kill onto the crunch, but the damage just isn't quite there. Rotations are coming through from Ian Fidalgo and Yusa Rude, dude. Iggy comes around from the backside. Yufel steps up. That might have been a bad decision. One of the worst in his life, but the Thunk is going to come through anyway onto the Iggy. Keeping him out of this one. Nice double smashing grab by Ian Fidalgo. He's hitting pretty well on those, but the aggression will still stop. Double turrets down, making it difficult for us or Rage to really push too much further for any of these kills. This does mean it is a potential for Fang to fear. Um, a lot of uh, the team have to recall, and with Iggy being available, they can they could try and sneak it if they wanted. There is a Zetchian on Ivan, but again, neither team wanted to take that risk, because if they do manage to recall and get there in time before they take it, that can potentially be a couple team players killed and a potential wipe along with the Fang Tooth loss. And they don't want to take that risk. The risk is too great. Book Synchroman gets a nice sunk onto Oak Granola. One thing I would like to add about that that Fang Tooth is we've seen a lot of teams take it when they have the orange buff avail available. With those early Fang Tooths with the health building up sometimes, it's very difficult to take it down. So having the ar orange buff definitely makes it a lot easier and more doable to actually get that buff on your side. And with with High Two stealing it away as the Belka after that last fight, it made it really difficult for 
the stack to commit there. Digging might be caught here, out here by Ian. Luckily, he's got that recrunch, double dash, puts him to safety, and we're still seeing this heavy push with the Oastrid. I mean, he hasn't been punished as much as we've been talking. I mean, he's died a couple of times, but he's still pushing heavily on the Siggy. Yeah, that's the thing. Even though you may punish Niggy a little bit in the early game, it's so hard to keep him down when you get into the mid to late. And we're kind of at the point right now where there's not a whole lot that high to you can do except get a little bit more pressure from someone else on the team and maybe take the Iggy down then. But you still have the Blaze and the Turrets to work against. You felt getting initiated on by Vigan, but here comes a thunk from Books Increman. RF will come through from Oak Granola. This is the first usage we've seen in this game. The big shields are there from Oak Granola. Can they actually take down the Crunch? He's going to manage to evade that Obliterate. Didn't quite have the range for it. And Avon still wants to get some things done with his big, beautiful rocks. But Asura Rage, you know, just not being able to get that kill there is enough for the stack. Yeah, you see Appy Picker instantly <laughs> tried to drop onto Malix. Uh, look at the that he's like proxy farming the wave now while his own wave is hitting uh, the tier 1. He's probably going to get a free tier 1 off of that. So even though no one died, Asura's Rage are going to get the advantage. They're going to potentially get that tower for themselves here. Was that actually the Muriel? Yep, Lightstep Vanguard's in onto the tower, <laughs> trying to give it one little breath of hope, but it was not enough. I, I was thinking it was just some spectator bug. Oh no, no, he's here. got the Lightstep Vanguard. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't know if it's that card or the spectator anymore. I'm just like, yep, okay. Just, just <laughs> you just kind of go with it. <laughs> Abby Picker does have the Shadow Flame buff on the mid lane. Starts it out with the Horror Frost. The Blaze wasn't used. That could be it for the AK. And it is on the mid lane. He wasn't expecting so many people to be there. And when Asura Rage all get on in, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen for the AK. And he can't survive. That's going to open up the Fang Tooth for Asura Rage. Can the stack do anything about this? Well, considering Malix is still on the other side of the map, this is going to be a rough 3v5. Um if I've ever seen one. Yeah, it, you might just have to leave it. It's something that you might call a power play happening here in Paragon. Uh, Appy Picker ready with the Horfrost on the Ape, and they're taking him down so low. Seismic Assault, Smash Grab is going to pull him away from the Void Bomb, but there is so much damage going on to him. The Fang Tooth actually goes down, not sure to whom. Vacan seems to have some amount of white stuff around him, not sure if that's indicative or anything, but he does end up falling. They still want to go for this one, though. Is so far on Asura's Rage right now. I think Asura's Rage managed to catch that. A little bit risky here. They do manage to give up a couple of kills that weren't needed here from the stack. And it might have been just best to leave it. In this case, they managed to give up two kills and the, the Fang Tooth wasn't needed. You see a 13k lead now on the side of Asura's Rage. So Fang Tooth giving them that 5k gold along with uh, a couple of extra kills. Just nice for them. It definitely is, and the Sur Rage don't really seem like they're done just yet. They're going to throw in a Seismic Assault for good measure onto the Iggy and Scorch and just back away. Malix was getting at least something done, getting a push going in the right lane, but Books Increment was there to take care of it, and that's going to quickly put an end to whatever Malix was doing as the rest of his team was dying. Yeah, it would have been nice if he got a tier 2, but it, then it would have made him sit in that lane a lot more useful, but I don't know. Him sitting over there forced really awkward fights um, at 3v5 that maybe didn't need to happen. His damage was sorely missed there as well, so I ended up with Ivan. Going in, tried to take it. You know, there's so much CC there, they couldn't even come close to it. Well, we'll see what this turns into from Asura Rage. They're going to see Yusa Rudu just waiting there on the low ground, almost as if he had put an invitation out to Ian Fidalgo and was just waiting for him to arrive to the party. Blaze comes out. There's the cryosism, though. They need to kill off this Iggy. He's going to get the, the shields from the Muriel, and the RF will come down, but it's way too late to save the Iggy and Scorch. They will get hit with the smash and grab as well. So that's going to be three dead on the stack and is this really going to be an OP buff going over to a Sur Rage? They go over towards the pit. There seems to be some kind of disagreement. They want to just get a tier 2 here. Yeah, they want to remove the jump pads, uh, slow down the rotations a little bit coming out from the stack. They don't need to force it that much. They already have a pretty good lead, 9-1 uh, on the board. St the stack haven't been playing as well as they'd like. I mean, I really do like the, the shake-up that we saw here from Asura's Rage. They, cha they changed up their composition. They took away a couple of the picks that were doing really well from the stack, and you can see the impact that's had this match. 
it really has been working out for them. They drop down the Void Drone as they make their retreat away from this one. There's also no Wraith here, which is uh, probably a bit of a, a downer for the stack. They've played really well with that hero, even though they lost game number one. It did give them a bit of an advantage in the early game. Now Appy Picker going up against Vigan, toe to toe, fist to fist, well, fist to sword, whatever. Uh, Vigan is still putting in some damage there, but Appy Picker is about to have a little bit of help from Ufel. Gets the Glacial Charge over. The Infidel go. Oh no, he's blocked off the retreat. Gets a knock up. Smashing grab is going to lead to the death of Ufel. The stack are still trying to take a Fang Tooth, but with Vigan going down, they really can't make a play for this. No, they really can't. Just losing uh, the crutch, uh, losing an extra way of being able to stop the crash bang from Narbash. I mean, it's, it's looking rough. Uh, 4v5, they really can't take this at risk at all. Uh, it's about a 15k deficit in terms of gold. Um, I think they kind of have to give it up. They, they can't take any more risks. They've already taken too many at this stage in the game and they haven't been out. Well, another Fang Tooth goes over to a Sura Rage. That's their second of the game. So they're continuing to stack those buffs up. And look at this. Appy Picker is not going to let them have any minions in their jungle. Whose jungle is this? Oh yeah, that's mine. It, it's the Aurora's. She is going to freeze everything anyway. Aben, you know, tries to get a little bit of something, but it's so easy for Appy Picker to escape. That's one of the, the key features that teams like of the Aurora, is she's able to create so much space on the map, and she's able to get out of most situations all on her own anyway. Yeah, Rampage used to have that ability to just uh, go into the enemy jungle, jump over the wall to get out, of, but with the changes now, he He's kind of lost that, but he's gained more survivability, so he can sort of bait fights a lot better than he used to be able to. And look at this fight in the mid lane. Yeah, Ian Fidalgo trying to work with high you, but they just kind of missed the Sesame Assault. And that's probably going to be the end of that one. Oh no, Yusuru, dude, why did you go up to the high ground there? Ian Fidalgo is waiting for you, sir. Smash and grab is going to be there, even though the rock does hit Horfrost not quick enough from Happy Picker. That's going to allow Yusuru, dude, to get away, and the Sesame Assault won't be used in order to get him down. Tier 2 tower is still down in the mid lane, so they can make a play for the inhib if they really want to. Other than the OP, there aren't a whole lot of other objectives for them to take, so maybe this is where Azura Rage decide to assert their dominance. Yeah, it's going to be a 5v4 this mid lane, because Vision is still actually sitting here as Crutch. He's going to be too late to this fight. Ooh, they've been getting taken quite well. He's been playing the Rampage this entire game. The Crash Bang Boom will come on through, and he's going to tank most of it. Okranol, he's not going to be able to give his team any shields for the duration. And uh, even at least gets, well, he's going to get pulled back in by the Smashing Grab and taken down. Asura Rage are relentless, and they'll take their first inhib of the game in game number three here, trying to secure themselves a spot in the semifinal. Yusuru, dude, he's going to just miss that, that smash and grab, able to get away from there. But at least Vigan is able to find something here on the crunch. Appy Picker will see his tier two tower go down, and maybe Asura Rage will decide to fight this, or maybe they just decide to go for OP at this time. They, they have no reason to carry on fighting. Um, I do like the call for Epic Picker to go back and deal with the wave. Vigan, yes, he does get a tier 2, but at what cost? They lost an inhibitor. Maybe it would have been better for him to have been in that fight, uh, start out putting damage, try to take out um, Ufel on, or even high to, high to you. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's a little bit... I feel like their communication this game has been a little bit off. Um, their calls haven't been too clear. and The stack of because of that, I've been making too many mistakes, and it's looking like they've been losing objective after objective after every one of their calls. Yeah, it's just not really the same kind of charm that we saw in game number two from the stack. Maybe they can try to find a Fang Tooth here. They're still pretty far behind in this game. If it all goes, starts it off with the smash and grab. And Vigan's going to be able to try to put some damage there as the crunch. RF comes through from Oak Granola, but he's been blown up in so many of these fights. He's going to get caught out once again. Smash and grab again from Ian Fudalgo. Ian is uh, almost rivaling Appy Picker's Grux at this point. Malik's getting caught out again by the Horfrost. The Rock is going to miss. Appy Picker is going right after the Murdoch. And, well, it looks like she's kind of against the law at this point anyway. Malik's is going to get frozen up and hit by the Horfrost. That should be his death as Appy Picker finds that one. Regardless of the spectator bugs, it will be Asura Rage winning the fight, taking down four, and going right for the Fang Tooth. Yeah, and that's an. I think it's the third Fang Tooth it getting is. over here. 
to Serious Rage. You're probably going to see them recall, maybe even go straight to Prime if they feel like they have enough time to do it. Um, how many Zetchins do they have on their side? They only have... Uh, they have three Zetchins. They've been running three every game as well, from what I believe, which allows them to secure this n nearly perfectly with no real chance of comeback. Yeah, it's just so difficult, especially with the mid lane inhib being down. It's tough for the stack to get out of their base, and with this OP, it's going to be even more difficult. They're going to have to come with a really good last stand and uh, make sure that the, the Muriel can survive a little bit more. I think it's just so difficult against this heavy CC-based combo of a Sura Rage for this Muriel to have too much of an effect in the fights. Yeah, she's really been struggling, and as I mentioned, she got punished in the early game by Appy Picker quite a bit. Um, wasn't it? They weren't able to kill Appy Picker, and so he ended up having a pretty free lane for the most part. And right now, you can already see his point lead. He's at twenty-four thousand gold just by himself, substantially far ahead, further ahead than anyone else on the side of the uh, stack. Goodbye, Iggy and Scorch. And is showing EU exactly why that hero doesn't need to be banned in the in-house league or whatever league ends up being played here and a Sur Rage they're perfectly getting around that hero and pushing in on the inhib right now they're again looking really good for the semi-final berth we already know that Gal Esports are there perhaps a Sur Rage can join them in a couple of seconds as they push for their second inhib of the game chunking it down so very quickly Thunk hits onto Vigan. Infidalgo misses the smash and grab, and there's not going to be a Horde Frost onto it either, but they can still go for Malx. Books Increment is going to play the drums because he wants to make a lot of noise here as a Sir Azure trying to shore up their spot in the semi final. Malx will be taken down. The Frozen Simulacrum will keep Abby Picker alive for now. Aven wants to throw out a rock, but he's just going to miss it as the Glacial Charge goes out from Aurora, and that will probably be it. Aben falls down in the middle of the Horde Frost. Arof is again going to come down way too late. They're going to go underneath the last inhib trying to get down oak granola they're gonna just follow this kill forever and abby picker is more than okay with it oak granola tries to make a break for it the core is starting to take some damage it's going down to 90 percent as a sora rage seem to have forgotten that the point of the game is to kill the core and finally high two is like hey guys maybe we should you know just go ahead and end because it's not really that important to kill off a muriel but in any case they finally do they go for the tier two tower and uh, that should be it, a Sur Rage, unless they go for a late back like they did in game number one. We'll probably be taking this game right here, right now, with the OP buff on their side. It was really a fantastic performance from them. Yeah, the complete change up in terms of the picks uh, throughout the game it allowed them to get this sort of early game advantage and take, punish the stack and put them onto something different that they, than what they were playing all game. The Shinbi Band falls begin onto a crunch. The picks across the board were really good and it does just look like this is the game we're seeing the Sirius Rage take game number three here and they will be our second team making it to the semi-finals with the core being single target I think Aurora may be a hero that we see picked up even more in version 42 and later but that is going to do it for this matchup between Asura Rage and the stack with a Sir Rage taking our second semi-final spot here. And uh, they will be joining Gal Esports there. Not sure what the bracket will end up being, but we still have a lot of teams to figure this out. So, Gems, final thoughts on this match as we get ready for Bronze Army versus Arctic Wolves. Well, I felt like the stack had the potential to take that third game, but... They lost it sort of a little bit in the early stages. They gave up a couple of mistakes that really weren't necessary, uh, specifically Muriel and the Malix fight against Appy Picker in the early stages at the level one fight really didn't need to happen. Uh, it kind of set the pace of the game from that point, so with Yosuru also dying in the mid lane, that they were, they were going to start from a deficit. And from there on in, it, that deficit just kept growing. And... Every single fight ended up getting worse and worse throughout the game for the uh, the stack, and they weren't able to claw it back. Okay, well, that's going to do it for our game here today, guys. So we'll be back with our third quarterfinal of the day after a pretty good performance from Asura Rage. It's going to be Bronze Army versus Arctic Wolves coming right at you in just a bit.